Yo, yo, welcome to the video. Uh, so, before we begin, I do want to let you guys know about something, especially, like, this video. Uh, so, originally this video was supposed to come out around, like, Friday or Saturday. And so that's when I was shooting it for, when I made the Coming Soon post. And during the midst of that, right, one, I had lost all my footage for Jack Bro, so, I, like, I had to re-record most of it. But some of it's going to be, like, from other channels. You'll see it, like, around bottom left, bottom right, one and two. Um, but if you also notice something, I'm speaking a little low right now because I'm sick. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think around Thursday, Wednesday, I ended up getting like this really bad headache. And not even like a day later, I start getting my throat starts like fucking hurting like hell and stuff. It's a lot better than what it was before. I've also drunk tea before like doing this recording and stuff. And I got my water right here. Same hydrate and shit, but it, it was booty cheeks. I did not like it So if you notice my voice is like a little low or my energy is not as high as sound monotone points It's just so I can preserve my voice and my throat overall Especially for like the next couple of days. I'm gonna be recording the Christmas video. So Want all that to be all good and all that shit. So with that being said, before my Halloween plans got taken out back and shot executioner style, I wanted to review today's game, Jack Bros. A nice little Halloween X game, perfect for the spookiest time of the year. Obviously, that didn't happen, but I guess I could still make it spooky themed if Black Christmas is anything to go by. And I'm gonna be honest here, while I was doing the initial research, writing a script for this video, I realized that this might be one of my more shorter videos because I haven't been able to find jack shit about anything. Nothing about its development, how well it did in terms of sales, nothing at all besides like maybe the reception of it. And especially like when I was going through the game itself, it's only an hour long, maybe hour and a half, depending like on whether or not you're gonna struggle with some of the bosses or not, which we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, it isn't really a lot. There's barely any story in this game and it's just all gameplay. But despite all of that, I can talk about the console that this bitch was on real quick. It needs your eyes. Virtual Boy, see it now in 3D. Yeah. In August of 1995, the US was introduced to the Virtual Boy, which would swiftly be discontinued a year after its release. And don't get me wrong, on paper, this console is like really cool and stuff, you know, you have the whole little virtual reality aspect to it, you know, the whole shebang. But in execution, and I can attest to this, that despite playing this on an, you know, on an emulator and stuff, that shit was so uncomfortable. Motion sickness and many other health concerns and factors led to it being the worst selling console for Nintendo. Though, despite the Virtual Boy's short as hell lifespan, it did have some pretty cool games like In's Mouth No Yokata, Virtual Boy Wario Land, and of course, Jack Bros. This game was released in the States on October 20th, 1995, and it has the distinct honor of being the first Megaton related game to be released here, beating Revelations Persona by a year. The game has you playing as either Jack Frost, Pyro Jack, or Jack Ripper as they rush to the fairy forest before the portal to their world closes. And that's pretty much it for the story. As I mentioned earlier, this game is nothing but gameplay. Good old fashioned gameplay. The best way to describe Jack Bros is a top down action game where the main goal is making it to the last floor of each of the six areas without Loki going insane. There's a time limit that carries over throughout the game and it basically acts as your HP. Of course, once it reaches to zero, then it's game over. Now you are able to continue, but you're gonna have to go all the way back to the beginning of the level. And this isn't so bad until the later levels where it ends up becoming the literal embodiment of hell. More on that later. Each floor requires you to find the exit, and in most cases, you're finding keys to open them. Though in other cases, you're basically trying to get to the exit without getting violated by the enemies and traps on whatever floor you're on. Now at the end, there's a boss you have to face, which ranges from not being too bad to being the manifestation of every evil motherfucker on this planet. Again, more on that later. There's three characters you can play as, with each of them playing differently and having their own unique special move. Jack Frost is the first character you can play as, and to be honest, 
My boy kind of sucks when it comes to damage, however, he does make up with his firing rate being the equivalent of a Gatling gun, and his special move raises all enemies on the current floor, which is great when you're trying to get a move on. Pyrojack is the second character you can play as, and he is a great all-arounder. He has the damage, decent firing rate, and his special move damages all enemies on screen. Finally is Jack Ripper, who can damn their one-shot enemies. Now sure, he's a melee character going up against most of the enemies that are ranged and or annoying to catch in this game, though with his special attack, that isn't an issue as he can just kill everything on screen. Definitely one of my favorite characters to play as. As for the floors you go through, each floor introduces a different challenge alongside a whole bunch of new enemies. There is a lot, so we're going to have to go through this as fast and as cleanly as possible. And with that said, so first you got the slimes, which are slimes, they ain't shit. Next are the goblin brothers, or I guess bomber goblins, because they lay their bombs in the most annoying spots imaginable. You can shoot the bombs as Jack Frost and Pyro Jack, but if you're playing as Jack Ripper, eh, it's going to be a bitch and I have to deal with. Next enemies are Tomcats, which are really annoying to deal with as they can run up on you like really quick. Next are elves. They are annoying. Nothing more, nothing less. Afterwards, you have Mystic Morgans, which are like the slimes, but they can actually attack. And disappear, and that shit can be really annoying, but not as annoying as... Furens, or Furens, or however the hell you pronounce it, are the most annoying enemies to fight, as they can only be killed from the side and behind. No matter which character you play as, your chances of killing them easily is low as shit. Next are Poltergeist, which are easily the best and most annoying enemies to kill. Not as annoying as the Furens, but still pretty annoying. Defeating them adds 50 seconds to your timer, which is really valuable for the later stages, but this is all at the cost of them running away like a chronically online man coming across a real woman. Skill appears are literal hell incarnate, and while they're pretty easy to defeat as you only have to just hit them in the head and stuff, they trigger my fight or flight like a motherfucker. Next are Angels, which are... They're not bad, but they can be really annoying when there's like multiple of them on screen. And finally are the Cyclopses, which can eat a two ton moldy bag of dicks. Now this list isn't even half of the shit that you're going to have to go through in this game. As alongside the enemies, you also have to deal with Spike Flooring, a tiki statue that can shoot flames out of his mouth, a stationary laser gun, a moving laser gun that is just waiting for your ass to come near it, and finally, the Paradise. Fuck Paradises. Now something that is fucked in this game is that your special moves affect how much more time you get at the end of stages. At the bottom right you have these stars that represent how many times you can use your special move, and you are able to pick these bad boys up while looking for exits. At the end of the stage it will calculate how many stars you have, and the more you have of it, the more time you'll get. Now sometimes you can go without using special moves, while other times it feels like it's damn near necessary to do this, and this shit sucks in the long run. Like I know it's a way to challenge you, to make the game a little bit more difficult, you know, but with everything that the game pelts at you, it can be annoying as shit to have to worry about that, and also have to worry about your timer as well. Now when I did my first playthrough as Jack Frost, I had multiple occasions where I was using my special move to make things much easier, and it fucked me over when I came across the bosses in this game. Out of the 6 bosses in here, only one wasn't that bad to deal with, meanwhile most of the other bosses were annoying as shit to deal with, and most of this annoying comes from their attack patterns, movement, or the stages themselves being all sorts of fucked. The first boss, Lamia, is really easy, so I don't really gotta talk about her too much. The second boss you encounter is called Sinister Scar, who wasn't really that bad, but with the fact that this game's movement have you moving in the four cardinal direction, and this motherfucker can move in all eight directions, is fucked. The third boss you encounter is the vampire, which sucks ass. And that's not, he doesn't literally suck your, okay, let me stop before I get fucking. <laughs> His stage is a moving platform with each row switching directions randomly. Oh, and it gets worse, as whenever he appears, he sicks a shit ton of bats at you that can also move in that full eight directional movement that I was talking about earlier, which I'm gonna be real with you, fucking sucks. The fourth boss you encounter is the spider, who's more or less slow to kill. Even with Jack Ripper, you're going to be spending time dodging projectiles and trying not to get stunned. The moment the latter happens is when you're fucked, because you can't do anything unless you get hit. Now, looking back at it, the first four bosses aren't really that bad. They're annoying, yes, but they aren't bad to deal with. However, 
These last two bosses are the epitome of annoying and is the representation of what it feels like to get skull fucked. The first of these two bosses is the Wyvern. Now, this motherfucker's attack pattern feels like it's randomly going from quickly using his flames or using his flames until he hits your ass. Add that with the fact that the whole arena is filled with spike traps going up and down at a quick speed and... But once I beat him, I ended up getting a sigh of relief before getting skull fucked by the final boss, Beelzebub. And honestly, he isn't even that bad in comparison to Wyvern. He has two phases with the first one being his human form, who pretty much plays like Lamia except that you can't destroy his projectile. The second phase though is harder with him not only shooting the projectiles at you, but also spewing a shit ton of flies at you. Plus there's his health bar which JESUS FUCKING CHRIST! But here's the thing, right? This fight wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the fact that you have to deal with the fucking PARADISES. These fuckers are an absolute nuisance to deal with in both phases, because they move pretty fucking quickly. Add that with the projectiles and later flies that the Beelzebub can spew at you, and it felt like I was playing a fucking bullet hell on the hardest difficulty. Now, I managed to reach him with both Pyrojack and Jack Ripper, yet the closest I got to beating him was with the latter. Even then, this final fight is almost like a time and special move check, as if you don't have a lot of time and you barely have any more special moves, you're fucked. As a result, I wasn't able to really beat this game because of him. Originally, when I was playing this game and getting all the footage before, you know, I lost it all. Uh, I was playing it during my finals, which were very fucking stressful to say the least. So I wasn't really playing to like my best ability. So a lot of the things were like really hard for me at the time because, you know, I barely had any brain cells to function while playing the damn game. But... When I ended up doing the re-recording and stuff, I was actually able to beat the game. And for that one, I ended up playing as Jack Ripper. Now, was it hard? Yes, specifically with the Wyvern fight and the Beelzebub fight. But nonetheless, I was able to get through a lot more comfortably this time. And that's what the fact of like knowing that, hey, you need to keep up with your special moves and stuff. You need to have at least like six or more to be able to go through this shit comfortably and stuff. And one thing I will say is that if you are planning on playing this game, if you play as Jack Ripper, uh, first of all, yeah, play as Jack Ripper. He is the main character you're going to want to play as because he is easily the best character in this entire game and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, and when it comes to using special moves, only use them when you feel like you really feel like you're going to need it. Or, on the other hand, use them when you're dealing with the poster guys. Trust me, you'll be able to get more time and it'll make most of the later levels a lot easier. Oh shit, one last thing. So, uh, time actually doesn't carry over between each level. A little correction I want to make real quick. And at the end of the level, you basically have your special stars, which affects how much time you're going to get for that next level. So, here's what you need to do. Try not to use your special moves a lot. So, like, the more you have of it, the more time you'll get for that next level. And trust me, especially for the later ones, especially Crystal Palace, it makes things so much fucking easier. So besides the annoyance of most of the bosses in this game and the type of shit that it'll throw at you, uh, I actually really like this game. It's definitely a game that requires you to manage your time well, and when looking back at it, it isn't really uber hard, but it can get difficult at some parts. Now, this is one of those games in the community that everybody likes to meme on, and you know what? It's understandable, especially considering that out of every console that this game could have been put on, it was put on the Virtual Boy for some fucking reason. I do think that some parts could have been done so much better though, and while I was trying to do research for this video, I remember reading through the reviews and seeing someone saying that they should have made this more puzzle oriented. And you know what, I completely agree. If the game was like that and even omitted the bosses, I definitely would be singing a different tune. Though regardless, it was still fun experiencing this game for the first time. So, should you play Jack Bros? Fuck it, why not? This game is only about an hour long, and to be honest, it's better to just do one playthrough of this and be done. Okay, so I have to pull out the phone for this one because I still don't know how to pronounce this game's name, but if you're looking for something you know, a little similar to Jack Bros, something a little bit more fun, then might I recommend you Synchronicity Prologue, or Synchronicity Prologue. You know what, let me know in the comments how you pronounce it, so... Yeah. That this game was released back when Strange Journey Redux came out, and if you like Cave Story, I guarantee that you'll love this game. One last thing, if you are somehow thinking about wanting to own Jack Bros, uh, 
I want you to perish that dot immediately. There's already the fact that the Virtual Boy costs as much as a PS5, and I think Xbox Series X as well kind of depends and stuff. But one of the other things is that for both the American and Japanese copies, Jack Bros is the worst game on that console. So, uh, if you go over to Japan, you'll be spending up worth like $200, and over here in America, you'll be spending up to this much. Oh, great heavens! Well, with that, thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. So, despite being sick as a dog right now, I am recording the last bit of gameplay for the next video, which is going to be the Christmas video. Uh, if you guys want a little bit of hints for that one, it does have to deal with the mitochondria. Yeah, so if you know what I'm talking about, just keep it a secret in the comments. Don't worry, you guys are going to be getting this soon. It's going to be a late Christmas video, but you guys will be getting this soon. But I am going to end this video early because I feel like shit and I need to take a rest right now. So, make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the bell notification so you guys know when the next video is going to be coming out. And make sure to stay safe. Do whatever you need to do to stay not getting sick like I am, whether that be wearing your mask, getting your shots, uh, taking medicine, take your vitamins, do fucking whatever. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.